Hello, everybody. This is Terry Nance. Welcome to Armor Bear Awakening. We are truly in an awakening of the church. It's an awakening of the Spirit of God, you know, and it's just finding Jesus. It's just knowing Jesus. That's where it's at. But you know, the Spirit of God, once we get a new revelation of Jesus or we get a new experience of the Lord, then what happens is, of course, we're, our gifts are stirred up and it's time to begin to connect. And then from there, man, you got to get in the local church. So I encourage you, if you're not in church today and you're watching this broadcast, get into church, go make things right. Go talk to your pastor, begin to support the leadership. Uh, it's a new day. Uh, we've got devastation on one side and we've got visitation on the other. So let's choose visitation. Uh, I want to share, uh, with you some things and I'm, I'm still going through the armor bear book. And so real quickly, if you enjoy this, be sure and subscribe, send it to every person, you know, of. send the link because it'll bless them and it's going to minister to them to connect with their leader. Be sure and send them over to eight minutes strong with the armor bear. 260 uh, videos there, eight minutes. And so, I mean, they're going to learn. They're going to get the material. Um, and also go to godsarmorbear.com to get, get all the books. Now I've been, I've been talking, I've been taking this right out of God's armor bear and I'm on page uh, 59. And so we're really looking for the spits is really the leader looking for an armor bearer. And I just wrote down some questions that a leader needs to ask themselves, especially when they see or they believe in God for someone. Uh, do you, does this individual have a disciplined prayer life? You know, it, it is so important because uh, when you know people who pray and you know people who have the heart of the church, you know, you can ask them to pray for the church and I'm going to tell you what, they, they, they kick it into a gear. Uh, you know, a papyrus, Paul said this about papyrus. He was faithful in this clause chapter three said he was faithful in, in prayer. He was fervent in prayer. Well, how did Paul know he was fervent in prayer for the church of Colossae? Because he prayed with him. So, and, and when, when they begin to pray for the church of Colossae, Man, he's going, wow, man, this guy is really, uh, praying with, with intense and, I, uh, you know, intensity. And when you see that, you know, these people have your back. They, they're not just your back. They are with you and they're standing strong with you. All right. The next thing is real simple. Are they faithful? Are they faithful to church? Are they faithful to their family? Are they faithful? Can you depend on them? You know, one thing that, I just refused to do when it came to my pastor and I used to go pick him up uh, and take him to the airport. He always wanted me there because he knew, I mean, if his flight was at six o'clock, I was sitting at his house and he wanted me to have him there by five. I was at his house. If it was 4.30, he needed me to be there. I'm to get to the airport by five. Then I was there at four at four forty. I was there at four fifteen, or I was there at four. I had the van running. I had the back open, and it was ready for me to grab. And the minute I saw his garage door going up, I went, grabbed the bags, and I helped them get in the vehicle. And the way we went, and I was never late. And you know, you say, well, you probably did that because you wanted favoritism. No, it's not about favoritism. It's about honor. It's about honoring your leadership and it's about doing your very best. Uh, next question, is their family intact? Okay. Uh, I mean, how is their family situation? And then here's, here's one right here. Are they tithers? Do, do they have, you know, where your treasure is, is where your heart is. And you can, you can go wherever you want to, but we have money to spend on all kinds of stuff that we want. But do we have a heart toward God and a heart toward our church that we are tithing the 10% sowing and giving? Now you can argue over that all you want to, but I mean, I, I choose to believe, uh, a theologian, Jack Hayford, and you've got uh, just some great ministers, you know, uh, Robert Morris has one of the largest churches, uh, in the nation, man, you ought to hear him teaching on the blessed life. Oh my gosh. And I encourage you to re uh, read his material, get in there because man, you talk about someone who teaches on tithing 
And, and so is that, are, do they, do they put their money where their mouth is? Do they support the leadership? Do they bless you as a pastor? So let me just tell you, do something. I don't care how small it is. Do something to give honor to your leadership and to your church. And when a pastor is looking for someone, uh, to be an armor bearer, that's what he looks for. So do they have a disciplined prayer life? Are they faithful to church? How's their family? How's their marriage? How are they? How do they interact with their kids and interact with their wife? I mean, you have to know these things because these are the ones, pastors and leaders, these are the ones who are going to carry your heart and your spirit. And we have all made the mistake looking at someone, man, they got all the goods. They just got all the talent and they come find, find out they're not loyal. Uh, and there's all kind of character issues and we get burned and then we learn and hey I'm guilty I've done it all and you know what and I regret because I didn't go back to my own knowing of how I was selected and you know you just have to test people you have to test their character as a leader and you have to know that they're faithful they're loyal they're tithing they're they're givers uh and we'll get into some more of these areas tomorrow, but let me pray for you. Father, I just release spirit of excellence on, on the people and I, and every armor bearer, I thank you for a new fresh anointing, uh, just to move on them in Jesus name. And I thank you for the grace to tithe, the grace to be faithful, uh, the grace in their family and the grace of God upon them in their prayer life. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Something good's going to happen to you today.